Hi, I'm Alex Brown, and I'm the technical lead on a new project at Xerox that we're really excited about, called Xerox Mesh. Xerox Mesh is a peer-to-peer -peer network for sharing orders. To help explain this, I'm going to take a step back and talk about how sharing orders on Xerox works today. Uh, Xerox features off-chain order books and on-chain settlements. Orders are just encrypted payloads that you can share any way that you want. Um, you could email them to somebody, you could send them over snail mail. Uh, once you have an order that you want to fill, you go to the Xerox smart contracts to actually fill the order on-chain. The way that most users interact with Xerox and share orders with one another is through a relayer. Relayers are responsible for collecting, users, uh, collecting orders from a bunch of different users and aggregating it into a single order book. Uh, they allow users to add, remove, and update their orders through a GUI interface, through an API, or in some cases, both. They can also share orders with each other through something called the standard relayer API. There are a couple issues with the standard relayer API, especially as it relates to relayers sharing orders with one another. It requires a lot of redundant work across relayers because a lot of them are written in different programming languages and they have to build their own SRA implementations for each language. It's also been hard to achieve compliance. Not every relayer implements the SRA in exactly the same way. And in practice, we've seen subtle differences between them, especially as it relates to error handling and some edge cases. The SRA is not easily adapted to new token standards. We actually had to put in a lot of work to add support for ERC721 tokens in the new SRA associated with version two of our protocol. And it does work in the end, and we have something that we think is, is usable, but it did take a lot of work to add. And finally, for relayers that want to share orders with one another, uh, using the SRA to do this means that they have to know all the identities ahead of time. Uh, if you want to pull orders from somebody else's SRA endpoint, that's fine, you can do that. But if you want the opposite to be true and you want them to pull orders from your SRA endpoint, you actually have to contact them uh, typically in real life and, and tell them about your endpoint and ask them to use it. Uh, it's a really slow and manual process. So what this leads to is a disjointed network for liquidity. Not all the relayers have implemented the SRA, and even for those that have, not all of them are sharing orders with one another. This is one of the use cases that Mesh is designed for, and one of the problems that it can solve. Uh, there are two main use cases for Mesh. Firstly, it makes it easier for relayers to share orders with one another. But there's also a separate use case, which I'm going to talk about more later, which is it allows users to share orders directly with one another without any kind of hosted third party. Mesh has a lot of advantages for relayers compared to the SRA. Uh, Xerox Mesh runs in a Docker container and relayers interact with it over a JSON RPC API. Uh, in this model, all relayers that run a Xerox Mesh node are using the same implementation and that means whenever we want to do updates, it's a lot more flexible and it's easier to update. It also means that compliance is guaranteed. Since all the relayers are running the same code, uh, we don't have to worry about subtle differences between the API. Uh, Xerox Mesh uses a flexible messaging system, which will be much easier to upgrade to support new token standards or new order formats. And since everybody's running the same code, uh, doing these up upgrades is a lot more seamless. Most importantly, Xerox Mesh features automatic peer discovery. So for relayers that want to share orders with one another, you don't have to know all the identities ahead of time. When a new relayer spins up, if they're connected to the Mesh network, they will automatically be sharing their orders with other relayers and receiving orders from them, which is great. What this will lead to is a much more cohesive network for shared liquidity. With Xerox Mesh, we expect to see more relayers sharing orders with one another and taking advantage of the shared liquidity pool. There's another use case for Mesh that we're really excited about, and it's a new model for relayers called the serverless relayer model. Xerox Mesh can run directly in the browser, which means if you build a front-end UI on top of it, users already have everything that they need to start sharing orders with another and trading. Uh, it is even possible to host the front end in a decentralized way, for example, hosting it on IPFS and serving it through a DAP browser. 
In this model, each user has a copy of the order book, and Mesh automatically keeps it up, date, up to date by uh, removing orders as they become canceled or filled. The serverless relayer model is not a great fit for every market, but we think it makes a lot of sense for smaller niche markets where uh, tokens are not listed on relayers yet. As exciting as this is, there's still absolutely a place for traditional hosted relayers. Uh, the first time that you use a serverless relayer, it actually takes a bit of time to warm up while you're connecting to new peers and getting a copy of the order book where if you use a traditional hosted relayer, it eliminates this warm-up time and you can start trading right away. The serverless relayer model can also put a significant strain on a user's computing resources. Uh, each user has to spend time downloading orders and validating them. And with a serverless relayer model, or sorry, with a traditional hosted relayer model, you can avoid this problem and you don't depend on the computational ability of your user's devices. Hosted relayers also have the ability to reduce order collisions, for example, by using order matching or other techniques. In the near term, this is not really going to be possible with the serverless relayer model. And so for these reasons, we think that the traditional hosted relayer model will be a good fit for highly liquid markets um, where there's lots of orders coming through. Uh, I'm going to talk about some of the technical details of Mesh. Uh, it's written in Go and compiles to WebAssembly so in order to be run in the browser. Uh, under the hood, we're using a library called libp2p to do uh, networking with peers and peer discovery. And we're using a technology called WebRTC to allow two browser peers to communicate with each other directly. Uh, we're building in an incentive model that encourages people to share orders with one another, uh, including orders that didn't originate from you. Uh, where we have a sophisticated system of checking ETH balances to prevent DDoS attacks. We officially announced Mesh in March of 2019, and we released an architecture doc uh, explaining our plans for Mesh and how we're going to build it in April 2019. Uh, just recently, uh, two weeks ago as of filming this video, we released the beta version of Mesh. Uh, so right now you can run it, uh, you can start experimenting with it, there's still a couple features that we need to add and some improvements that we need to make. And we're planning to launch a full production version in September. I took the screenshot of our internal dashboard, which is tech keeping track of some metrics for Mesh. Uh, over the past 24 hours, we've had 30 unique peers uh, enter the network, and we've shared a total of 105,000 orders. Uh, so we're tracking this over time, and we're excited to see it continue to grow uh, even after just two weeks. Uh, finally, here's some links that you can use to get more information about Mesh. Uh, the first link will send you to our GitHub page, which has a lot of instructions for how to get started running your own Mesh node. Uh, it documents the API that you can use to interact with Mesh. Um, you can also follow the Discord link. If you have any questions for us, uh, we'll try to answer them as quickly as possible. Uh, thanks.